Okay. All right. So um, yeah, I think I heard because because somebody our own like somebody is only here for this session, right? So last class we talk about the equipment. I remember we talk about we can bring the tow chain, right? We can bring uh, the booster cable, and then we can keep the, for example, sandbag or like cat litter or anything that can increase our traction just in case if we get stuck somewhere in the snow. And then we talk about how do you like identify some of the places that, you know, might be hard for you to get out of, right? And then we touch a little bit more um, on the techniques, right? So for example, if you do get stuck, if you do get stuck in the snow when you're parking, or sometimes it also happens when you're turning as well, but like if you get stuck in the snow pile, how do you get yourself out, right? Oh, so we talk goodness. about like oh, rocking the there. car. Sorry, was there a question? Okay, then uh, I'll just sorry. keep going. <laughs> uh, sorry, just let me, uh, tell me a little mess, yeah. I think, I think she has audio problem. Never mind, we will, we will proceed. Yeah, so like you can also interrupt me anytime. And then also you can type into the chat box. Okay, and then, so yeah, and then we talk about like how you can rock, rock the car back and forth a little bit and try to get the car out. You can shovel the snow, so make it a little bit more flat and thinner, right? What else did we talk about? Or like if you're pushing, right? If you have somebody to help you, and then you want to push along with the racking motion as well so that you can get out of the spot a little bit more easier. So that was for the parking. And then we're going to next today, the first thing we're going to talk about is the hills. OK, so this is one of the most daunting situation in the winter time as well. And then later on, we're going to move into, for example, if you're driving, driving in the traffic or just driving in the, on the road in general, what are some of the things that you're looking for to make sure you have enough time to prepare and slow down and stop smoothly, right? Um, instead of like getting too scared and then like just losing control completely because you had to break really hard. So yeah, today we're mainly just gonna talk about one, finish the hills. And then we're gonna talk about how do you start at an intersection? How do you um, look up ahead? And then what do you look for? And how do you work with the other drivers? And then in the end, we're gonna do some exercises, mainly for the observation mainly, okay? And then I'll share some videos as well if we have time. So that's the plan for today. Now, talk about hills. As you can see right now, say for example, you're the driver right now. And then it's like winter time, the road is covered in snow, or if it's not covered in snow, it still look okay, but you can see some reflections, right? So it's not perfectly dry on the road. If you see a hill like this, would you actually try to climb it while driving? <laughs> no, no, right? This is, this is very like, this is a really steep hill as you can see. I know we, the good news is we don't really have this kind of hill in Calgary, like not this steep, but we do have some pretty steep ones, like especially by Crescent Height, I think. Yeah, around Center Street, like if you go a little bit north Center Street onto like North, Northland Drive over there in that area, it's pretty hilly, right? We have some pretty steep slope. And then also, yeah, we have some steep slopes, some like in, in Calgary, not this exaggerated though. <laughs> but yeah, if you see a steep slope, right? When you're going up the, if, and it's covered in snow, the best option of course is not to go on it because Unless you have, have a lot of confidence in your tire, a lot of confidence in your car, you will get stuck in the middle of the hill. Doesn't matter how, how good your techniques are, just because the road is just way too slippery, you won't get on there, okay? Now, if we talk about like a normal kind of hill, actually, do we have, yeah. So if we have like a normal kind of hill, like this one, our goal is trying to maintain the speed so that we don't have to accelerate all of a sudden and we don't have to brake all of a sudden to make sure that we're staying together and flowing the, with the traffic, okay? So staying, you know, maintaining our speed. So 
before I talk about that, actually, um, let's talk about this video. I just realized I missed this video. So let's go back to this video. And then we're going to talk about some of the dangers that can happen, right? If you're not being careful on the hill. So this is one video. Am I sharing the sound? Okay, I'm sharing the sound. Uh, Video accelerated. I might be. Oh no, it's, it's the same. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Slow it down, okay. Oh my god. Hmm. Oh my god, you alright? That shit sucks. Yeah, so you can see that this is an uphill, and then the danger about slow stopping on the hill itself, right? On the in the middle of the slope, is that there's not enough traction for you to stay on there. So for example, if you see a uphill, right? And then on the top of the hill, there's a traffic light, say for example, or like somewhere on the other side of the hill, there's a traffic light. But because there's a lot of cars, so all the cars is lined up all the way to say, for example, the crest of the hill or the other side of the hill. And now you're the one that's getting stuck in the middle and this can happen. I'm not saying it's going to happen in Calgary, and then a lot of times if people are um, prepared, like they have the winter tire and then they are watching out for this situation, it won't happen. But when the road is slippery, for example, if it's not a major roadway, if it's somewhere in the residential area, right, where it's not cleaned very often and there is a layer of ice underneath the snow or say there's just a lot of cars has been sliding down the hill and then the surface is pretty slippery already, you might have the situation, okay? So this is up if you, oh, what do I do? Okay, so this is uh, the best thing you can do. First of all, starting to practice right now, identifying the hills. So, you know, a lot of drivers, what I find is that people don't look far enough. So when people don't look far enough, one is that you don't have a lot of reaction time, but in the summer it can get by most of the time because you still can stop in the time or in the distance that you see, right? But the problem is that you don't see the hills, right? And then you only realize, oh, I'm driving too slow um, after, you only right, realize this is a hill after you feel like, okay, why am I so slow? Why is it that I have to press on the gas pedal so hard to maintain the speed? And it's because people are not looking far enough. And then I think I talked about this last time as well. This is one of the key points, especially in winter driving and also for any driving that is you know, proactive and safe, right? You need to be able to look far enough. And in winter time, identifying the hill is very, very important. So how do you do it? And then I think I touched on it last time too, when I'm trying to talk about how do you find the lanes, right? How do you know where to drive? is you're gonna look along the pavement all the way to the horizon as far as you can see. So get a general idea about what is the road like up ahead, right? And then if you look far enough, you will usually be able to see, okay, there's a slight slope, there's a really steep slope, right? You'll be able to see them ahead of the time. So if you see there's a slope and nothing's on the, on the hill, right? And it's not really steep, usually you'll be fine. But then if you see like the situation that we saw in the video, you have a really busy traffic and then there's the traffic light and then the traffic is congested. Everybody's kind of like slowing down a lot and then people are stuck on the hill. Then maybe you want to turn away from that hill like somewhere before that, right? So this is one of the key points about looking far ahead. So say the hill is like a block away, right? And then because you see it two blocks away, you can turn left and right at the next intersection so that you can avoid going onto the hill and getting stuck there. Especially if you know that you don't have the winter tire, especially if you know that, okay, the car skids a lot when you're driving in the winter time. So observation is the key. And then this is the first thing you're gonna do, trying to prevent getting into this situation. 
Now, what do you do if you're already in that situation, like stuck in the traffic, right? So say you're stopping at the red light and you're on the hill, right? The moment you let go of the brake pedal, the car may start sl sliding down. Like if you're not already sliding down while you're stopping, when you let go of the brake pedal, the car is gonna slide down. And then most of the cars right now are equipped with hill assist. So most of the times the car itself would prevent the car from sliding backwards. But on the, you know, uh, in, on, the, on the slippery road, even though the car is preventing itself, but because the tire is not grabbing onto the floor at all, even though the tire itself is not turning, it can still slide. As you can see in this video, like a lot of those cars, oh, their shit. tire is not even turning. Oh, like their tires are not turning at all. So when you are ready to start at the intersection on a hill, what you're gonna do is you're gonna step on the gas pedal very gently at the same time. And if those of you who has been driving, who have been driving um, manual cars before, you know how you work the clutch and the gas pedal, you kind of do the same thing with the brake and the gas pedal as well. So you're not letting go of the brake, move it to the gas pedal and then start pressing it down. You're actually using both feet, okay? If you want to be sure, right, you can do that. And make sure you're both doing it slowly, okay? So if you all of a sudden press on the gas pedal, because you realize the car is, is sliding down, it's gonna make the tire spin. And remember the video we watched last time, when the tire starts spinning, it's gonna just polish the, you know, polish the road underneath. So it's gonna make the situation even worse. So yeah, go slowly. Go slowly on the gas pedal so that the car doesn't slide so much while it's starting at an intersection. Okay, now about maintaining the speed. Okay, so you don't wanna get stuck in the middle of the hill. And then one of the thing is you don't want to get the car to slow down in the beginning, right? So you don't want to say, okay, why is the speed not going up? Why is the speed slowing down? And then usually in the summertime, people will just step on the gas pedal harder to like make up for that speed. But if you do that in the winter time, if you all of a sudden you just step it a lot harder, the tire again, it might spin on the ice. It might spin on the slippery road surface. So what you wanna start practicing right now, other than observation, another thing is trying to control the speed. So get used to, or get an idea about how much you need to step on the gas pedal to maintain the speed on this type of hill, right? So usually you start, like say, this is the hill, right? You start at the bottom of the hill. You don't start here to accelerate. You start at the bottom of the hill. Before you even start slowing down, you start pressing on the gas pedal, Right? And then you keep that pressure on the gas pedal and steadily going down throughout until you go to the top of the hill, right? So you're never gonna let go, okay? You're gonna step on it slowly down and then you wanna find that pace stepping down. So if it's a steeper hill, you're gonna step on a little bit faster. If it's a slower hill or it's a, like a less steep hill, you're gonna step on the gas pedal a little bit slower, but you wanna keep pressing down but you just want to find that pace okay depending on how steep the hill is so start practicing right now at the bottom of the hill start the acceleration already okay don't wait until you already start slowing down and then you try to make up for that speed do not let go of the gas pedal all the way until you reach the top of the hill so while you're going up you're trying to see okay there is the top of the hill you see it up, up ahead but don't let go of the gas pedal until you reach there and check your speedometer, okay? So you have to check your speedometer. The safer bet is, okay, when you get to the top of the hill, don't let go just yet. Check your speedometer. If you see it's going up a little bit, okay, even though it was, you were maintaining the speed perfectly while you're driving up, when it's just going up a little bit, you let go of the gas pedal and go to the brake. Okay, so you cover the brake because usually after the hill, you're going to go downhill, right? So yeah, try practicing. First, observation, identify where the hills are, right? And then start the acceleration at the bottom of the hill and keep that acceleration going or keep that pressure on the gas pedal throughout until you reach the top of the hill. So you need to know where it is, okay? So now we're talking about downhill, okay? Now for downhill, I don't know if I have a video. Okay, I'll show you guys this video. Can I ask an uphill question? Yes, go ahead. Uh, in, for 
if you're in the middle of going uphill and mm-hmm. you see that there are people up there, like further up there, that's already stuck. Yeah. Um, so what is the safe way to get out of that situation? Okay. Let me just give you a... See if I can do a whiteboard. You can see the whiteboard, right? Yeah. Okay. So for example, like this is... Like there are intersections like this, right? So if it's on a major roadway, okay, and then you see people are getting stuck there. For example, this is the hill, right? This is going the uphill now. And then here is a traffic light. And then people are kind of like stopping here already, mm-hmm. right? And then you can see there's an intersection beforehand. You can turn left and right to the intersection. If it's in the residential area, you'll usually have smaller blocks. So you'll have more opportunity to, you know, turn off the road so that you don't have to go onto that hill. Yeah, so basically de- detour, <laughs> detour around. And, and if there's no detour, like you are literally halfway up the hill and you see that people are stuck up there. How, like, do you reverse? You just, you just hope you... that the road is good enough for you to stay on there. <laughs> There's very little thing you can do right now. Yeah. Okay. So, but do check, for example, if you're already, like, if you're already there on the hill and then you see that the people are kind of sliding back already. Yeah. There's really nothing you can do. You can check the mirror, see if there's anybody behind you. Maybe you can even like, you know, consciously, go back so basically you basically control your speed if you can <laughs> while you're reversing up but that is not the safest thing to do right but comparing to you know just letting that car in front of you crash into you maybe this is one of the only ways that you can prevent that crash mm-hmm. so yeah like the best thing you can do is just to prevent it in the first place because if you're already in that situation and then the road is slippery yeah. there's very little you can do right mm-hmm. and then yeah you just you just hope that you stay there <laughs> you just hope that everybody stays there yeah. yeah because if you if i were to roll down to escape the people coming from the top yeah i may lose control of the car too it may just keep rolling right yeah you can happen right if the road is really slippery but the like if you have a smaller hill, like if the distance is not that long, maybe you're not going to build as much inertia. So you will still be able to kind of like stop at the bottom of the hill somewhere here, right? So you have to make sure you, you know what's happening on the road. Like you check in the mirror, right? To see if there's anybody coming, right? But then if you're on the reverse gear, um, this is another thing. It's like, you need to be able to adapt to the situation. And then this is what a lot of people do in the winter time. Like the rule sometimes doesn't seem matter that much when people are trying to prevent the collision. So if you are aware of this, you know, you are watching out for the other people's taillight. For example, if you see that guard has his reverse light on, you know, that white light mm-hmm. on the rear end of the, um, of the car, if their tail light is on for the reverse, then you know they're reversing, right? And if you'll be able to see that from a distance, you'll have some time to maybe either move to the side or like, you know, turn off the road. So again, like it's, it's mainly about looking. It's mainly about seeing what's happening, right? And then once you see, most of the time, our reaction is it's good enough. Like you have that judgment, knowing what to do. And a lot of times people cannot react is because they don't have enough time. Like they're caught off guard and it's just, okay. They just realize they're already in that situation before they can do anything. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's about, you know, being flexible and then check around the surrounding and then you can make the best decision at that moment. So it really depends, right? How the road is, where are the intersections, how steep the hill and how long is the hill, right? How far do you need to drive? How far do you need to reverse? Like I can tell you one example. There was one time I was practicing with a student and then there was this hill and then I thought, okay, it's not that steep. <laughs> it's not that steep. Let's try to do it. But the road is actually way too slippery for us to make it. So the student was flooring the gas pedal, like the gas pedal is all the way to the bottom. 
the car is not moving at all. Like she was trying very hard. Like she was doing a good job maintaining the speed in the beginning. She was doing exactly as I said. She's not stepping on the gas pedal all of a sudden, but it's just in the middle as we're climbing. It's yeah, it's it's just too slippery. And then what we had to do is we actually needed to like you know put it onto reverse. And then we are actually able to control the speed a little bit still with the brake. So that was good. We didn't lose control just because the still is like the hill is not that steep. It's just too slippery. So yeah, that was like one real life example. Um, but yeah, hopefully, like if you're not that confident with your tire condition, if you're not that confident with the road, maybe just like try to avoid it in the first place. But again, like it's your call, your judgment. Okay. So yeah. And then let me just do the sharing again. Okay. Okay, so this is this is in Montreal. And then because they don't snow that much, people are not prepared for this kind of snow. Like it's not even that much snow compared to Calgary, right? Mm -hmm. But because people are not ready. And this is what happened. So there is an intersection right here at the bottom of the hill, right? And then you can see the cars were stopping in the beginning, but then the cars afterwards, they can't stop, especially with this bus that's oh. pushing everybody forward. Oh, my goodness. Taxi's gone. Like pay attention to their tire too. Ooh. Like you can tell that the driver is braking, like the tire is not turning, the car is just sliding down. The next bus is coming down. Uh oh. Oh. Hey! Guys! <laughs> Get out of the car! Yeah, so this is that. <laughs> is it going to help in a situation like this if, if I'm rolling downhill? Like, is it possible to turn my tire sideways so that it kind of, does it even help? You see what the taxi did in the beginning? Remember the taxi kind of slided sideways and then it kind of helped. Um, it does, like if the road is wide enough and it's empty enough, that might help. But then like, you also gotta be aware of the traffic condition, right? Like if there's any oncoming car, right? Or if there's anybody trying to like go around you on the left, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. before you do anything, it's always like, you always need to know what's happening all around you. So like, we're gonna like talk about more details for observations, but basically what you do, like you're not only looking up ahead, but you're also looking all around. Right. Mm -hmm. So every time you, okay, you know what's happening and then you don't need to do anything at the moment, you check in the mirror, right? Anything, anytime that you feel, okay, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> like I'm just maintaining my, my speed. You got to check your mirror. You don't just like blank. You don't just go blank ever when you're in the car, especially in the winter time. Mm -hmm. So like you said, it could be a good tip, like turning sideways, but you're not, it's not guaranteed that you're just going to stop. Right, it can start sliding sideways as well. <laughs> so, so it's 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 really I don't know. You can try different things. Like if you know what's going around you, right? If you know that it's like you have that space to try different things, go ahead, right? Like there was one time for me, I was going down the hill, and then very similar to that situation where there is a downhill, right, and then there is a traffic light at the bottom of the hill. There is a car already stopped there. He stopped properly, right? He stopped good, right? Nothing's happening with him. And then I'm coming down. And then because I didn't slow down enough beforehand, 
I wasn't able to break enough. So I can feel that the car is sliding and then it's getting closer and closer to the car. And then I'll go, oh, shoot, I'm not going to be able to stop. But the luckily for me, the lane next to me is empty. Mm -hmm. So I just went over to the other lane and then that gave me extra space to stop. So I didn't have to crash into that car. So it's all about you being aware of the surrounding and then do whatever you need to do. So try to prevent collisions, right? Um, but yeah, you just have to see everything. So from my example, <laughs> from the mistake that I made, you guys know that slowing down early is very crucial. Okay, for going downhill. Now in the summertime, a lot of people, they don't just like, they don't even care. <laughs> they just let the car go faster, right? And then they can maybe like adjust the speed afterwards. Or they don't even realize that the car is going faster and it's going over the speed. They don't even realize that this is a downhill. But if you have that in the winter time and you happen to need to turn at that intersection, at the bottom of the hill, where you happen to stop, need to stop at the bottom hill. This is where the trouble is, okay? And then you can see already from the video and from my example, the main thing is that you are not able to stop. You're not able to slow down when you need to at the bottom. So, break early. As soon as you see that there is a going, there's, there's a downhill up ahead, as long, as soon as you see that, okay, or as soon as you get to the crest of the hill and then you start going downhill, Right here, you're gonna need to start braking. And not you're not just braking to maintain the speed. In the summertime, you can try to brake just to maintain the speed and try to practice how much you need to brake to maintain the speed. But if it's in the winter time and then the road is slippery, you're not only maintaining the speed, but you actually need to slow down more than mm -hmm. when you like how you usually the speed that you're usually driving. Say if you're driving 50 on the road, right? And then on the uphill, you're trying to maintain 50. Good job. And then when you're going downhill, you're not trying to maintain 50 anymore. You're trying to drive around 40 or even 30. Like you're trying to slow down. Okay. So break early. Start slowing down. And then pay attention to the intersections up ahead. Right? Especially um, the cars coming from the side. Okay. So if you are facing a... If you're facing a red light, of course, obviously you need to stop, but you also need to be aware that if you're not able to stop, the cars on the side, they might crash into you. They might T-bone you, right? Because the road is slippery for them too. Even if they see that you're coming here, they cannot just emergency brake. They cannot just like slam on their brake and stop before they crash into you. Even if they slam on the brake, the car might still slap, like smash into the car, in your car. So Pay attention to the traffic on the side as well, okay? And if you see cars are going and you're facing a red light, make sure make sure that you're braking early and slowing down beforehand, okay? Now, when you actually get to the last bit, right? So you see, okay, this is where the stop line is. And usually we'll just like keep driving until we kind of come to a smooth stop right here, right? Right before the stop line. But in the winter time, you're gonna try to aim for this spot. You're going to aim for this position. So you're going to leave that extra space in front of you so that if you're actually able to stop here, great. You can, right before you come to a stop, you're going to keep the car rolling until you get to the line. But if you're not able to stop right here, you have this extra space to, you know, come to stop. So aim, your goal is to stop here, okay, not here anymore. Okay, so you want to leave that maybe half a cart length or even one cart length if you're just starting to practice, right? So that you have that extra leeway, right? Just in case if you couldn't stop, just in case that you're sliding, right? Because you're not, you're not sure about the road condition. Like even if it's a road that you drive every day, the condition might change the next day because, you know, the snow is melting and everything. So it's always good to give yourself some like, you know, plan B, leave some extra space. Yeah. I Same thing. Yeah, go ahead. If you go downhill sliding, can you pull on reverse and slow down ah. or neutral? Neutral, even worse. Somebody told me yeah, pull you your car to neutral or reverse. I don't think reverse would work because if like the road is not that slippery, you're not moving forward anymore and then you're obstructing traffic, right? Because if you put on to reverse, that is like when you already started to slide. That is already when you can't brake at all, 
you can try reversing, but at that point, it doesn't matter it how your tires turn. Will that really damage the car? It won't damage the car, oh, oh. but it's just I I I don't think it's gonna do anything oh. because if you're already sliding, that means your tire is not turning anymore, right? Mm -hmm. You're already braked, and it's just sliding with because of the weight of the car. Mm -hmm. So even if you put it to reverse, the car is hardly gonna grab onto the ground. Oh. So yeah, like I don't think that is gonna help. That much well you can try like sometimes maybe if your tire is good enough it might actually work right uh -huh. but don't do that don't put it onto reverse just every time you see a hill no, okay yeah, of course Only yeah when you you cannot control and yeah and it's a, a danger, danger yeah. hassle then you have to do immediately but yeah. somebody say put in a neutral is it that makes sense in neutral it does kind of make sense to me i have never tried it huh um, but it does make sense because basically when you're in neutral, um, how do I explain this? You know, like when you put it, put the gear into drive yeah. and then you're just stopping on the flat ground, you ease off the brake, the car will start rolling already. Yeah. Right. So there's that RPM already bringing the car to a move. And then in neutral, you don't have that extra little bit of power. Oh. So it kind of makes sense to me. I don't know how much it would help. Hmm. Maybe I'll try it, like see if it, like, yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll try it sometimes and then see if it actually makes a difference. Yeah, but um, somebody told me, but I don't know if that, that's right. I, I, yeah, like if you're already fast, it. if yeah. you're already fast, you can't, like your goal is to stop or your goal is to slow down. Neutral is not going to help you slow down that much. It just doesn't, it just doesn't bring the car to a faster speed. But as if, much uh, as if you go in the downhill, if you put your handbrake, you then mm. stop. Handbrake, if you're rolling down, somebody somebody behind you, yeah. can you put a handbrake? Well, if you're trying to like help the car slow down yeah. and then just pressing down the brake pedal doesn't help, mm. you can put on the handbrake trying to help the car come to a full stop so that you don't crash into the car in front of you yeah. or you don't go into the middle of the intersection. Yes. And then, so the thing is, um, the handbrake or the emergency brake basically locks the tire. Oh. That's, that's, that's how, where it doesn't really lock the tire, but mm. it's like a mechanical brake mm. that is trying to make the car slow down and mm. stop. So it's just an extra bit of help from, for the brake. Mm. So it's not gonna like all of a sudden just make the car like free, freeze, right? So I, I would imagine that would help. And then like you, you actually brought up a really good point. Like you mentioned, if there's a car behind you, can you do that, yeah. right? Yeah. That's so it's all, a, it depends yeah. on how fast that car is behind you and how close they are, mm -hmm. right? If you see that they're really close, like, <laughs> yeah, if you, if you can't stop, they're not going to be able to stop. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to crash anyway. If yeah. they're far enough, right? If they're far enough, then break, right? Mm -hmm. You can always try to break because you would expect them to see it. You will never know, of, obviously. You will never know what the other driver is going to do. All you can do is just hope that they can, you know, observe the situation and react to it. So mm -hmm. make the decision based on what you see. So if they're far, mm -hmm. yes. If they're not far, they're really close. Try to break gradually, starting from the beginning. Okay, so this is going back to our main point. As soon as you see the downhill, start slowing down already. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's a red light or a green light because maybe the light is going to change. Maybe somebody's not going to, maybe somebody's not going to stop for their red light, right? So just start slowing down in the beginning. And then when you need to stop, leave that extra space just in case. Now, the last point I want to know, I want to point out is the pumping the brake. Because I know a lot of drivers say, okay, you got to pump the brake because you don't want to lock the tire. So what I want to say is that right now, if you're driving with a car that is equipped with ABS, you don't, you don't need to pump the brake. Because before, why people tell other people to, why the instructors are telling people to pump the brake is because if you brake too hard, you just like slam on the brake, the car, the tire is actually going to lock, lock. Like you cannot control the steering, you lose control completely. What ABS does is that before it goes past that point, it's called a threshold point. So when it goes past the threshold point, the tire is going to lock. 
But ABS, before you push it past the threshold point, ABS is gonna push it back up. So you're gonna feel this jitter on the brake pedal when you're driving in the winter time and you're trying to brake. So when you feel that, that is ABS working. Okay, so it's basically pumping the brake for you. So all you need to do is just apply the steady pressure on the brake so that it can stop as soon as possible or as slow down as soon as possible, okay? So yeah, but like I, I've talked to some people and then they say, okay, I do pumping the brake all the time and then it helps me control the, uh, control the steering. What I tell them is that like, all they're doing is Elon, like it's just, they're, they're increasing their stopping distance, but I don't know, maybe if it works for you and then if you think that is better for the situation that you're in, like I would recommend you trying different things and use your judgment, right? Make that decision based on how much distance you have up ahead, how fast the car is moving at that moment. So you make that decision, okay? Yeah, but always, the earlier you can see stuff, the earlier you can start braking, the earlier you can start slowing down, the more space you have, the easier it is, okay? Nice. So I have a question. Yes. I uh, is that if you have ABS, that mm -hmm. means you just uh, press the brake down harder. Okay. No, not just like slam on it, but like in the when you feel that jitter, yeah, you don't let go. If you're oh. trying to stop, okay, yeah, okay. but like when you're actually driving, when you're trying to brake, still brake normally, still mm. brake like slowly and gradually but it's just in the end and you're trying to get the car to a stop and you don't feel like it's stopping and you press extra hard and you start feeling that thing, then you just apply the pressure. Don't let go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good Thank question. You. Thank you for right. bringing it up. Can okay. I just clarify that? That means if, when you feel the ABS working, you, you still keep on with the pressure. That's what you're saying, right? Yes. Because it, yes. it kind of scares you a little bit the first time you feel that and then you, you lift up your feet, right? Right, right, but, right. But shouldn't do that. So you just keep applying the pressure, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 But you don't freeze on your hand. Okay. So <laughs> when you're, you know, when you're trying to focus on applying the pressure on your foot, sometimes people just walk down. But you need to keep your eyes on the road so that you can still control where you're going. Because a lot of times when you brake really hard and maybe as working, the car is sliding like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you wanna make sure that you're controlling the direction, controlling the steering. So you look into where you wanna go. Okay, always look into where you wanna go, um, not at where you're gonna hit. <laughs> so if you feel like the car is going into the curb, don't look at the curb, look at into the space. We call it, uh, in Mandarin is like do you, do you, Have you ever heard that term? It's like, if you have a very narrow space, you're really focused in that space. You're not focused on what's on the side, but you focus on the space that you're trying to go through. So same for driving. Like if you feel like the car is skidding, you don't just want to panic, but you really want to focus on where you want to be. Okay. So you're looking to the road, you're looking to the end of the road. So that's why I want to say like, start practicing right now and get into a good habit. You want to train your eyes to look on the far point on the pavement, okay? Not right in front of you, not at the obstacles, okay? I know it's kind of easier to set and down, done. Uh, so like, just start practicing. <laughs> what yeah. about steering? If the car is going to the curb, so you have to turn your wheel to the right, right? Uh, yeah, no. and then, the exactly. The opposite way. Yes, so. It's going, if your car is going, to the right, you have to turn the wheel to the left. Yes. Okay. Now, but I do want to mention, see, this is the mindset for a lot of people. And sometimes it get them into trouble because if you think, okay, I'm going to hit the curve. So I'm going to steer the opposite way. That means that you're looking at the curve. You're not looking at where you're going because if you're looking at where you're going, you'll find out oh, the car is is swinging away from where I'm going. It's straying from the path. Mm. You won't see that I'm going into the curb. Okay, so if you tell me I'm gonna hit the curb, so I'm gonna steer the opposite way, that means you're looking at the curb. <laughs> oh. Okay, so always focus on the road. 
And then another thing that might get them into trouble is that say if the curb is on the right side, you steer a lot to the left. And if the car is still moving at a pretty fast speed, say if you're on a curb, right? And then you feel like the car is not moving in the direction you want it and it's about to hit the pavement on the side or the divider in the middle of the road, say for example, and you just steer a lot, the car is actually gonna spin. It's just gonna mm. spin on the road, right? Because even if it doesn't spin, it's hard to kind of correct. It's gonna keep waving back and forth mm. and then you might not be able to counter steer enough. So yeah, be careful with that mindset, okay? <laughs> just, just know that you wanna focus on the road. You always look on the road. So you don't even see the curb and everything else. Well, you kind of see it with your peripheral vision, but you want to focus on the road. You're thinking about, okay, the car is moving to the left, but I want to go right. I want to go there. It's not going enough right. So you're going to steer right. Okay. But yeah, practice. Um, okay. Now we get into some details. More details. Uh, should I show? Do we have enough time? I think, hold on. I think I... You have, about, you have about half an hour. Yeah, this is more about those examples. Maybe I'll just send the link for you guys so that you can look at it after. Because I want to try to save some time for um, like examples. Where is the chat box? Okay, so I send a video link to the chat box. Now, if you wanna like take a look later on, you can. Okay, now how do I go back? Mm. Oh, here, okay. All right. So we talk, so we talk about like, mm, if you're going downhill, right? And you're too fast, the danger is that you are not able to stop or slow down enough when you need to. Um, if you're too slow though, there is also the danger of obstructing traffic. And if you all of a sudden, for example, you realize, oh, there's something up ahead and then I need to slow down, but you slow down too quickly, right? You slow down too quickly. You're not giving enough time for the drivers behind you to slow down. So for example, you have a really good tire right? You have studded tire. You can stop and slow down very quickly, but maybe the car behind, they still have the old season tire. You don't know, right? And then they might crash into you. So it could get into a rear end collision. Like if you slow down too much too quickly, or like you just driving too way too slow the whole time. So um, how do you decide how fast you want to drive? If you're driving straight, okay, if you're just a straight line, I will say as, as long as this, like the road is relatively clear, you still drive along with the traffic, okay? So you wanna drive around the same speed as the traffic speed. If you're the only one who's faster than everybody else, or if you're the only one who's slower than everybody else, you need to pay attention. What do you pay attention to? If you're going faster, you gotta look way, way ahead, find anything that will make you stop. For example, traffic light, right? Even if it's a green light, it might change. So look for traffic light, look for pedestrians on the side of the road that may be crossing. So if you see a pedestrian walking towards an intersection on the sidewalk, and then they're checking on the traffic like this, you know, they might, they're, they're thinking about crossing so that you might need to stop for them, right? So pedestrians on the sidewalk, traffic light, intersections, intersection, not only for um, the intersection that you are facing a stoplight. Oh, wait, how do I word this sentence? <laughs> intersections, not, uh, not just the intersections where you have a stop sign, but also the intersection where you don't have a stop sign, where you have the right of way. You also need to pay attention because not everybody's going to stop, right? Especially in the winter time. So if you're driving faster than everybody else, you really need to actively look for anything that will make you stop up ahead and slow down if you see anything like that okay 
if you're just driving straight, I'm saying, okay. And you're thinking, I don't need to stop any, like, I don't need to stop. There's no curve. It's just a straight line. Like, I don't need to worry about speed. Fine. But if you need to stop, that is when you will get into trouble. Okay. So look for those. Now, if you're driving slower because you want to be careful, right? Um, you need to look for the things behind you. Like we said before, what do you check for the, in the rear mirror? You're going to check for the distance of the car behind you and the speed of the car behind you. Okay, so if they're driving really fast, they're catching up to you, but they don't seem like they're doing a lane change, right? Or like if you're trying to stop for a traffic light up ahead and you're checking the mirror while you're braking and the car is just coming really fast, right? That means they're probably not going to be able to stop unless they do a lane change. You're actually going to roll forward a bit more. You can't even touch the bumper of the car in front of you. So you're rolling slowly until you touch the bumper very gently. One is to give some space behind you, some extra space so that the other driver may be able to stop. Another one is, this is another thing that the other instructor told me. He's like, like if you're touching that car, all the force is gonna get transferred to the other car. So you're not gonna get sandwiched in between. Like your car is not gonna sustain any like serious damage. So that's what he told me. I, I, I never seen it. I don't know if it actually worked. It kind of makes sense to me, but I don't know. But yeah, like if you see the car behind you is not able to stop, roll forward a bit more because you, you're, you're better at controlling the distance in front of you than behind you, okay? So just give them some extra space or you can honk, right? But yeah, you can honk and see what the other driver is gonna do. So yeah, if you're just driving on the road though, always check around. Okay, and then if you see that the car is catching up to you and then they're not picking up, uh, they're not slowing down, they're not doing a lane change, you wanna pick up the speed a little bit more if you don't need to stop up ahead. Okay. Um, I'm always the one that's driving too slow in the winter. <laughs> and, yeah. and, be, and because I do that, uh, I find that the car behind me, you, you're right about paying a ticket because when, when that happens, I find that I'm paying a lot of attention to the cars behind me. And, and very often there will be cars that are like tailgating me because I'm yes. going slow, right? Yeah. So um, it, is, it is a dangerous situation for them because they are so close to me, right? Exactly. And then also if it gets into a collision, it's always the car that's at the back that is responsible. Yes. If you yes. get into a rear air collision, mm -hmm. they bumped into you, is their full responsibility. Okay. So um, like if you're smart, you don't tailgate somebody in the winter time. I know. So, so <laughs> yeah, my, it doesn't, my doesn't matter how. Yeah, my technique, I don't know whether it is right or wrong. That because yeah, to me, the idiot behind is so close to me and it's like the roads are slippery. I, I go even slower, not, not to annoy him, but to be so slow that he has time to overtake. Oh, I see. So, I see. so that, yeah, yeah, it's not that close to me from behind. I, I don't know whether that's that's right or wrong thing to do. <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually a good point. Like if you want to signal to the other drivers, tell them, okay, you got to go around me. Mm -hmm. There are two ways. Okay. So the first way is um, you move a little bit to the side of the road. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're not driving perfectly in the middle of the lane. You move to the side of the lane. Okay, and then say if there's an empty lane on the left, you let them overtake on the left. Another thing you can do is put on your hazard light. Mm -hmm. If you want them to go around you, put on your hazard light. Okay, usually hazard light indicates to the other drivers that you want them to go around. It's even the same thing, like say, for example, right now you have a flat tire, right? So you're not driving in the winter time, but you have a, like a, not like a completely flat tire, but like you're still driving, but it's pretty flat. And you're just driving to, you know, to the gas station to pump it up. You can put on the hazard light because you need to drive a little bit slower, right? So hazard light is one thing. Moving a little bit over to the other lane is one thing. And then you just you just hope that the other drivers don't tailgate you, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then also another thing you can do to prevent collisions like this is that, like, if you see something that is coming up that you will need to stop, make sure you start braking really early. So because they're so close to you, they might not see what's making you stop. 
because mm-hmm. they're so close. And their only indicator, their only hint is your brake light. So if you start braking really early, you're able to brake really gradually and slowly. And then they are able to, you know, brake gradually and slowly with you so that they don't need to brake really hard. Okay. When you need to stop. So, yeah, but yeah, like, don't, don't just like drive really slow unless you know that you're going to need to stop. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So like try to maintain around the same speed. Now the ideal condition, like the ideal situation is everybody slows down. Right. Um, so that you don't have to worry about it. But like, say if you're driving on Shag and Abbey or like, you know, 70, 80 road, or like if you're driving on Stony, the road is not that bad. And then you're the only one who's driving like 50, 40 <laughs> on the 80 <laughs> road. That's, that's too much. Right. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So is that house light? Is that emergency light? Uh, yeah. Like, you know, that emergency light. Yeah. Emergency light yeah. four way flasher. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, we, and then we're going to talk about when do you need to slow down? Say if you're just maintaining the speed with everybody else, but there are some times or there are things that you have to slow down for, right? So we're going to talk about that just in a bit. Okay, so start and stop. It's pretty straightforward. You got to break early, right? And then when you're starting, you also need to accelerate gently, okay? So the whole point of breaking early is so that you can break gently and slowly. And then for the acceleration, same thing. You want to practice accelerate gently as well. Because when you accelerate too fast, um, again, like it spins on the it spins on the road, right? So a lot of people have that habit when they're driving in the summertime, say they're waiting at a stop sign and then the traffic just keeps going and going and going. And then they see this gap. They're like, okay, if I slam on the gas pedal, I can make it. <laughs> so they just like <laughs> zoom into the intersection. And usually they're fine. Okay. I see this more often in like younger drivers when people are a little bit more aggressive and then less patient or sometimes even for new drivers they feel like like they are not that confident in making that judgment for the space so sometimes they tend to rush things a little bit but yeah like you don't want to rush though in the winter time you want to give yourself plenty of space to go into the intersection so say for example this is one car this is one car right and then they're coming you're thinking okay in between there's enough gap uh, gap in the summertime, this will be fine. But in the wintertime, you want to like leave a lot of gap. Okay. So make sure you are able to enter the intersection while accelerating gently. Okay. You don't want to just like rush it. Okay. You don't want to force that into the other driver because you cannot rely on the other driver to stop for you anymore in the winter time. So make sure you have a lot of time to accelerate gently. Same thing when you're stopping at a traffic light. So when the car in front of you starts at an intersection, you're going to leave about two, three seconds, right? Before you start the acceleration. Because, you know, you want to leave that extra falling distance. And then always, it's a good habit to ease off the brake first, let the car roll, right? And then while the car is rolling, you gently follow that motion and step on the gas pedal. Okay, so start practicing now if you're, you're, you're not already doing that uh, because it does kind of take some time to correct a habit. Okay, and then I already talked about like leaving that extra bit of space in front of where you wanna stop, like the stop line or like behind another car, right? So that's that. And then for steering. Can I ask a question about the intersection? Yeah. Go that, ahead. That happens. That, that is something we we face every day, right? So in the winter time, um, how do you gauge, like practically, how do you gauge how much distance you need yeah. <laughs> uh, to stop um, right at the right at the the traffic light? Because it yeah. has happened to me before that I had to roll across a red light because the car just wouldn't stop, right? So yeah. I didn't give myself enough distance. So how do you gauge that distance is 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 hard to judge like if you drive a lot 
you might be able to make that decision. But in the winter time, it's just so unpredictable, right? Mm -hmm. So what I would recommend is that, like, say this is the this is the intersection, right? You're trying to stop here. Yeah. And normally you will start breaking, say, right here. Okay. So normally you will start break here and then stop right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in the winter time, you're gonna let go of the gas pedal way, 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 way earlier. I don't know if I can extend this. Yes, like way earlier. You let go of the gas pedal first mm -hmm. and see how much the car is slowing down by itself. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you let go of the gas pedal really early. Then if the car is slowing down quite a bit by itself, and then you're really far from the intersection, maybe just like gently tap on, uh, gently keep, keep some light pressure on the gas pedal so that the car keeps going a little bit more because that way you already have an idea about how slippery the road is, right? That will give you the idea, that will give you the basis of your judgment by letting go of the gas pedal early, okay? And then you still wanna break a bit earlier, right? Say usually you will start breaking here and then say everything goes to like the same as you expected, then you will still like break maybe right here. Right. So just to give yourself some extra space in front of like you're trying to aim to stop here, break here. Does that make sense? So do you do that when the light turns yellow? Yes. Or you do that when the light is still green. So you know how there's a pedestrian light? Mm -hmm. You can use the pedestrian light to help you or as a reference to help you know when the light is going to turn yellow. It doesn't always work. But say if you're driving around um, Center Street, 16th Ave, around downtown, the countdown timer is very accurate. So if you see the pedestrian countdown, if you're around that area, when it counts down to zero, the traffic light is going to turn yellow exactly at the same time. So um, if you have like one or two seconds left, you're still really, really far from the intersection, right? You need to stop for sure. <laughs> If you have one or two seconds left and you only have like maybe two or three cars length in front of you, you might not be able to stop. So just keep driving, right? So you, you can use that countdown timer to help you. But I know like for some newer communities, like if you're going to Evanston or like if you're going down south, they still have the countdown timer, but it doesn't turn yellow exactly at the same time. It, does, it kind of changes after a couple seconds. <laughs> mm -hmm. So don't rely on it too much. You can rely on it if you're driving in downtown, 16 Center Street, Edmonton Trail. But like if you're going a little bit further out of the core, then like don't rely on it that much. Always, always though, try to see where the stop line is. I know in the winter time it's always covered by snow, but look at where the like the curbs are. So you know where is the intersection. And then that way, when the light turns yellow, you know how much distance you have. You don't have to spend that extra time to process in your brain, can I stop or not? Like you're already thinking about it as you're driving towards the intersection. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah, thanks for asking that too. Yeah, because it happened to me that I, I roll into the intersection when like I stop. Like I, I was preparing to stop, but it was it was minus 45 that day or, or whatever. It was seriously cold. And yeah. the car just kept rolling. Yeah. And it wouldn't stop. And, and and the light turned red and it just kept going. The car just kept going. <laughs> the car it happens. Yeah. So the, the red light ticket was $325. Oh. Wow. Yeah. You actually got a ticket? Was there like a police officer or like just no, a no, it, the red light camera? <laughs> oh, yeah. $325. Yeah. Oh my God. There were like left and right of me, the cars had the same problem. There were three cars in the intersection because it, wow. it was just an ice rink. There was just wow. no stopping. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are situations where you can't really predict anything. Like there are situations where you just can't do anything. Like this is what's most scary about winter driving. It's like, it doesn't matter how prepared you are. <laughs> Sometimes it's just not a good idea to be on the road because yeah. you, you just can't know. You, you will never be able to know for sure, right? Mm -hmm. So the best thing I can say to you guys right now is to 
brake early, not even brake early, let go of the gas pedal early. If you cannot make that judgment or you are not that confident or you just want to be on the safer side, let go of the gas pedal way earlier, okay? Just to see how, how the car reacts. And then you can make your judgment based on that because the stopping distance, it varies. It varies a lot depending on how heavy your car is, how uh, your tire condition, how hard you're braking, how you're braking, right? Like it just depends on too many things. It's, it's very hard to tell. The main thing is your speed, right? The slower it is, the easier it is for you to stop. But like, like May say, sometimes like it's just an ice ring. <laughs> doesn't matter how slow you are. It just wouldn't stop. So you, you, yeah, just the best thing you can do is let go of the gas pedal already. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then for steering, steering, sharp steers, like quickly, quick steers is going to get you into a skid. Okay. Too fast of a speed is going to get you into a skid. So you will want to solve these two problems. For the quick steering like that, you want to start practicing right now. Like I see a lot of drivers, they might be driving like for 10 years, 20 years. They might be driving for a long time. But when they're doing a turn, they still do this. They do this and then correct themselves like that. Okay. So if you have a habit of doing that, you need to start practicing right now. And then trying to find a way or trying to find a kind of eye hand coordination so that you can do this smoothly. It doesn't mean that you cannot correct during this, during the turn, but you want to correct very gently. Okay. You cannot correct big, um, like big maneuvers. Okay. You cannot do big and quick maneuvers during the turn. Cause that will get me getting to a skid. One of the situations I want to talk about is for left turns. So, uh, you know, a lot of times when like you're turning left and then like everybody's telling you according to the rules, like say, if you're waiting for the oncoming traffic, you got to roll into the intersection to wait. Right. If you roll out too far because you're not watching out for this, in, like you're not looking this way at all, you're just focusing on the cars that's coming and you roll out too far, now you want to turn. In the summer, a lot of people will just like accelerate and turn really fast, like turn a sharp turn like this, mm -hmm. okay? But it's not going to work in the winter time. You're going to skip, <laughs> okay? So uh, what you want to do though is um, stop a little bit further at the back. So this is one time that like, I would actually tell you to cut corner <laughs> as an instructor. So, you know, you're not supposed to cut corner. Cut corner means that you're going like this. Like you're kind of taking, or like if this is the yellow line, right? You're kind of cutting the end of the yellow line. Mm -hmm. Or maybe on this side, you're cutting the yellow line a little bit. If the road is slippery, you want to make like cut corner, maybe just a little bit so that you don't have to turn sharp. So you, won't, you don't wanna do this, but you wanna do this, okay? Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, um, but yeah, like if you are able to move like pretty smoothly without cutting the corner, that's perfect. And the only way for you to do that on the slippery road is to be in a slow speed, okay? So now the next thing I want to talk about is slowing down for the turn. Oh, where is the drawing? Okay. So you see the turn is right here, right? So this is where you're about to turn. So this is where you start turning. A lot of drivers, they start slowing down here and then they keep braking into the turn. And then eventually they slow down enough right here. And then they start the acceleration right away here. But what you want to do is that you start braking here so that you're slow enough here and you let go of the brake here. So you're just letting the car kind of gently slide throughout the turn while keeping your foot on the gas pedal. So if the car is starting to slow down too much, you're going to like maybe gently press on the gas pedal to keep the car going throughout the turn but you're not accelerating during the turn, okay? You only start acceleration like when you're about to exit a turn, like still about the same space here. So like, again, like the main point is you wanna slow down while you're still straight. You wanna break when you're straight. You don't wanna break when you're turning. If you break when you're turning, the car is gonna skid sideways, okay? 
And especially you say, for example, you're driving like 45, 50 kilometers an hour. Say this is like center street, right? And you're trying to turn and it's a green light. You don't need to stop for anybody. A lot of times people just turn around like 30 kilometers an hour, <laughs> 30 and 25 kilometers an hour. It's not going to work in the, in, in the, like, in the winter on the, on the slippery road. You're going to skid. So make sure you're using the part that is, that is straight to slow down. So again, observation, right? You, you need to be able to see this is where the intersection is first. You want to know where the intersection is so that you can plan for your break. Okay. Nice. All right. Now let's move on. Okay. So I said, avoid braking or accelerating suddenly while steering, right? So like I said, you want to stop brake before, right? While you're still straight and then accelerate very gently throughout, but you're only accelerating to maintain the speed. You're not accelerating to actually go faster. Okay, go back to 50. All right, now steady recovery. So um, what I find in a lot of drivers, not just new drivers, even for experienced drivers, because they got into this habit, it's like they only start the recovery after the car is like fully straight and then they recover really quickly, right? In the, win in the summertime, it will work, no problem. Everything seems fine. But in the winter time, if you recover quickly and then you don't work your gas pedal and your brake properly, you might still get into that skid. So always do everything slowly, you know? And then the only way you can do things slowly is to do things early, okay? Now we can see like in this GIF, um, you know, this car is just driving on the road and all he's trying to do is the lane change. And then when he's doing the lane change, he just spent 360. But good for this car, he didn't break. That's the only reason that he's still kind of in his lane. <laughs> and then he's still like not crashing into any cars. And then he just basically moved back. And then the car, would like when you feel like you're in a skid, just let go of your foot. Don't press down anything. This is the simplest way you can, like you can remember, just, just let go. Don't let go of your hand, let go of your foot, okay? let go of your foot don't break don't gas don't don't do anything on your foot but then you're steering remember you got to look at where you want to go and then you want to control the steering if the car is already spinning like this you just need to wait until it's kind of straight and then control the steering okay so this is another situation right like if you're lane changing a lot of the times the drivers are lane changing like this you don't need to do that. Very slight steering, very slowly. And then you want to kind of slide into the lane. You don't want to cut into the lane, okay, when you're doing the lane change. All right. Okay. Um, I'll watch this video after I actually talk about the next, next section because this is everything. I think this is what a lot of people want to know. <laughs> like very detailed explanation about how you want to correct. Um, so I'll just go, go with this one. We'll talk about like the observation first. So driving in the traffic, how do you work with the other drivers? First of all, we want to know that braking time involves, or the time to, for us to actually come to a stop involves like three components. The first time is, the, the first one is perception time is the time that takes for our brain to process that, okay, I need to break. So it's when you see something and you realize, okay, I got a break. So this is the perception time. And then after you realize I got a break, then your brain instruct your foot to move from the gas pedal to the brake pedal and start braking. So that physical reaction time is the reaction time. And usually for the perception time and reaction time, each of them is about three quarters of a second. Okay. And then once you start braking, then it's the braking time. The braking time varies a lot depending on the speed, right? And then the road condition. But we do need to know that there's also the perception time and the reaction time. Okay. So this is even before you start braking, it takes some time for you to realize. So the best way we can do is to look early. What do we look for? Okay. Um, so curbsides. Well, first of all, we want to see where the other cars are. So if you're looking for cars, right, um, if it's low visibility, say if it's heavy fog or like heavy snow, if their headlight is on, then it, it will be easier for us to see them, right? So if you're driving at the night, 
like and you're waiting for the stop sign it's actually easier for you to see their headlight first before you can actually see the car right so it's the same thing for like low visibility now you want to be able to manually turn on your low beam so that your tail light is on your headlight is on we talked about this last class as well so if you don't know how to manually turn on your low beam you can always refer to your like the car's user manual okay so it's, it's not for you to see further, but it's mainly for the other cars to see you. And then now if you're the driver, you're looking for pedestrians on the sidewalk. We already kind of talked about it. Also pay attention to cyclists. Sometimes people are really brave. Like I really admire those people who are still riding a bike in the winter time. Like they got those like thick, thick tires and then they're actually cycling in the winter time in the snow. So you want to pay attention to them as well. And then so basically what you're doing is while you're driving, you're scanning from sidewalk to sidewalk, okay? You're not scanning from sidewalk to sidewalk by turning your head. If you do this, it's too late for you to do anything because you're looking at things literally right beside you and then you're still moving, right? So if you see a pedestrian right here, it's too late for you to do anything. So you never want to turn your head to look from side to side, unless you're already stopped. Okay. So if you already stop at a stop sign or like you stop at the intersection before you go, you look left and right like this to make sure there's no pedestrian coming that you didn't see before. But if you're driving, if you're moving, never look like this, but look up ahead from sidewalk to sidewalk, scan along the sidewalk all the way to as far as you can see. Just get a general idea about if there is any pedestrian, if there is any signs, right? So for the signs, we need to look for stop signs, obviously, because we need to stop. Stop signs, yield signs, signs at the intersections, and then also speed signs. Okay, so we want to know what is the speed that we need to drive around, okay? And then what is the reference? Pay attention also for, um, you know, that, those like exit only, no, not exit only, those, those exit, the yellow speed signs for the ramps, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like if you're exiting off a highway, right? And then usually you will see this yellow sign on the side of the high, on the side of the curve, the exit lane. It will say exit 50 kilometers an hour or like ramp 60 kilometers an hour. Those yellow signs, they are really good references for winter. Like in the summertime, people don't follow it. <laughs> like if you actually slow down to that sign, you're way too slow. And then people will probably start honking at you if there's somebody behind. But in the winter time, those are very good references to help prevent skidding. Okay, so speed signs, pedestrians, bicycle. Okay. And stop sign, yield signs. And also pay attention to the signs where you need to lane change. Okay. So the signs, like the yellow signs that tells you the lane narrows, right? Or like this lane is gonna end in 500 meters, then you gotta do those lane changes early because for lane changes, you will have time, right? And then you don't wanna panic and steer all of a sudden and then just spin on the road. Okay, so that's that. And then slow down if you cannot see far enough. So it can be low visibility, right? Heavy fog, heavy snow. If you cannot see that far, if you don't think you'll be able to stop by the time you see something, like the distance for you to stop is too short. How do I explain this? Like you're overdriving your visibility distance. What it means is that, for example, your car is right here. Your car is right here. And then there's a person right here. What am I doing? Okay. And then there's a person right here. And then you can only see this far, right? So the moment you see this person, you slam on the brake. But because say you're driving 60 kilometers an hour, your stopping distance is this long. So what's gonna happen is that you're gonna run over this person and stop right here because your speed is too fast, okay? And remember like one of the main contributor, main, main element that decides your stopping time is your speed, right? So if you cannot see very far, you need to slow down just in case if something just jumps right in, in front of you. Another situation where you cannot see that far is if you're following another car very close. That car can be a regular car. It can be a big truck, right? A bigger vehicle, a bus, school bus, anything that's larger. 
that's going to block your vision, right? You want to increase your distance by slowing down a little bit. Okay. You also want to pay attention to sig signal lights, turning signals. So if the car in front of you, say you're following them like this far, right? And then this guy suddenly started blinking his right turning light. Okay, so he's gonna about to turn right. What is the car gonna do when they're turning right or left? They stop. Yes, you're gonna need to stop, right? Mm -hmm. So if you see a car having their signal light on, that means they're gonna slow down and stop eventually. Or they, even if they don't stop, they're gonna slow down for sure. So as soon as you see their signal light, you're going to, you know, leave that distance. <laughs> okay. You're going to start slowing down too. You don't want to wait until they start braking and then you start braking, right? You can start braking earlier. You can start braking as soon as you see their turning light. And if the driver is good, if the driver is experienced, they'll give you plenty of warning time. Okay. You can do the same thing for the other drivers too. So for example, I know, okay, I'm going to turn at the next intersection before I even let go of my gas pedal, or at least when you let go of your gas pedal, you're gonna signal. Don't signal when you already break. Like there's no point. Your brake light is already warning them that you're braking. The whole point of signal light is to give the other drivers more warning time so that they can start braking even before they see your brake light. Does that make sense? Okay, so it works both ways. Okay. And then it's also for um, lane changes, right? So uh, you can signal earlier and you want to give some time for the other drivers to slow down for you. You don't want to just signal and then move in, right? Because <laughs> even if they want to slow down for you, they don't have time to slow down for you, right? And then don't, you don't have to shoulder all the judgment and responsibility yourself. As soon, like when you signal, the other drivers see your signal and then they can work with you, right? So signal early, it's always a good idea. And also watch for other driver signals, okay? And then stay for lane changes. In the case of lane changes, if you see a car in front of you, say you're driving right here and this guy's right here, and then he's kind of going over the line or he's got kind of like straying away from his lane, then you wanna increase that distance. Doesn't matter if he's turning, if he's moving around, like if actually doing a lane change or he's just getting sliding a little bit, you want to give that safety space, okay? It's called a space cushion. You wanna give that space just in case if something's happening, right? Just in case if that car got it into the stand, just in case if that car actually wanna move in and they need to slow down or they do something stupid, I don't know, right? So you wanna be safe, give them that space. When you're not sure, just, give a lot of space and then they can do whatever they want, right? So that's that. And then also the brake light. And then a good tip is when the car is braking in front of you, or if their brake light is on, you need to brake for sure. But you need to know how much that you need to brake, right? Are they braking to stop? Are they braking to slow down, right? What is making them brake? So that way, you're not just relying and then you're just thinking, oh, why is it like, how, how slow is he gonna be, right? So you wanna look up ahead. So don't just look at that one car in front of you, but you're looking the whole lane, the whole road. Again, scan along the pavement all the way to as far as you can see, right? Don't just focus on that one car right in front of you, okay? And then always you brake slowly as well, because the moment you step on the brake pedal, your brake light is gonna come on. So brake gently, so the other cars don't have to slam on their brake, okay? You, if you don't slam on your brake, they don't slam on their brake, and then you don't have to rely on them, their tire <laughs> to not crash into you, okay? So yeah. So in general, you're gonna scan along the curb all the way to the end, look for pedestrians, cyclists, signs, watch out for the turning signal of the cars in front of you and watch for the brake light of the cars in front of you. And also watch for those maneuvers of the car in front of you. Like if they're not signaling, but they're still moving over, you want to be careful, okay? You want to just leave that space just in case, okay? Same thing. When you see a brake light, when you see a turning light, increase that distance early, okay? Just in case. All right. You have 10 minutes. Thank you. What else do you need to watch out for? If the car doesn't seem like it's slowing down, like the car doesn't seem like it's being careful, you don't want to go like around them too close, 
right? So even if it's the car in front of you, if they don't slow down, right, they might not, like one, they, they might just stop in the intersection is like no longer your situation. But if they get into a spin or they start skidding left and right, then it might be your problem as well. So pay attention to those cars and especially pay attention to the cars that's coming from the side of the section and they're not slowing down, right? So even if you have a green light, you got to pay attention to those cars. Um, I think we already talked about these ones. Okay, mirrors. Yes, we kind of touched on the mirrors already. So what you want to do, the habit of observation, scan all the way down. And then you feel like, okay, I don't need to do anything. I just need to maintain the speed. So you check your speedometer and you say, okay, my speed is good. You check ahead. Okay, nothing changes. You check again. Okay, speed is still pretty good. Then you don't know what to do anymore, right? And you don't need to do anything. Then you check in the mirror and then you repeat this process, okay? Now, if you're looking ahead and you see anything that you need to deal with, deal with that first. After you deal with that, say you need to stop, yield to the pedestrian. After you deal with that, you accelerate, go to the speed, and then check the mirror, right? Also check the mirror whenever you're thinking about braking, okay? Whenever you're thinking about slowing down, you need to check the mirror. What do you check for? Like we said before, how close is that car? And then how far, uh, how, how fast is that car? All right, so we talk about that. Intersection, some of the common mistakes that the other cars can do. If you see a car that's turning left, especially if you're going straight and then the upcoming car is signaling left, they're waiting at the intersection, right? Sometimes if they're in a rush, they might try to turn before you get into the intersection and then they might skip, okay? So that could be one. If you're turning left and right into a road with another car, okay, let me just draw this so that it's easier. Okay, so if you're turning, okay, so let's do this. If you're turning right, and then you have a yield sign here, okay? You guys know what I'm talking about? So you have a yep. right turn lane and you have a yield sign, and mm -hmm. then there's an oncoming car that's turning left, mm -hmm. okay? They might turn into this lane, the second lane. So even though they're supposed to turn into this lane and then you're going into this lane, you don't, go, you don't actually go into each other, but if they turn wide, then they're in your lane. So ex expect that might happen. Also, if you're going straight and then if you're going straight on a green light and there is a car trying to turn right on a red light. And then sometimes this car will think, okay, they have enough time. But then because they accelerated too fast, they might skid or they struggle to go into the intersection or they kind of stall in here for a little bit. So as you're coming, even though you have a green light, you see this guy's turning, expect that they might turn really slowly. So you're gonna slow down, okay? You don't wanna just say, okay, they're gonna stop. They're gonna wait for me. So I don't need to pay attention to them. No, you need to slow down either way. Okay, so this is one. Uh, what else? Okay, and then also they might turn into other lanes. So if you're turning left and they're turning right into the same row, don't turn right beside each other, go a little bit behind. So that if they get into a skit or you get into a skit, you're not gonna just like crash into each other right away, okay? All right. And then also if you're driving straight, it could be a situation where the driver in front of you, okay, say you're in, this lane, okay? And then somebody over here, they see, okay, this lane is empty. So let me just change lane here. <laughs> so all of a sudden they have shortened your stopping distance and you might need to brake extra hard to make sure you don't crash into them. So this is another common mistake or this is another very common situation, okay? That you might encounter in the winter time. So pay attention to other cars who are turning at the intersection. If you're going straight, especially, expect that they are take, they're gonna take longer than usual to complete that turn. And then pay attention to your stopping distance, right? How much distance you have until the stop line, how much distance you have until the curb, right? So you know where the intersection is. 
And then when you're turning, don't never turn right beside another car. Always go back and forth, even if you're in a different lane, okay? Just in case. Okay. So that's that. And then I think... You wanna leave the rest of the time for questions? Yeah, sure. Any questions? Uh, not for winter driving, like yes. when it's sunset, the sun right ah. in front of you, it yeah. happened. <laughs> uh, when I go to my daughter's place, the, 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 the yeah, sun always at that time right facing, you, you can't see, especially it's really bad. How do you avoid, I, sometimes I use my hand to block a little bit, otherwise <laughs> there's, I couldn't there's, see. There's Even very little. Classes, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. There's very little you can do, especially if you're going up the hill. Yeah. And then the sun is right on yeah. the road. Mm. There was actually an accident that happened in Calgary like years back. Somebody um somebody got run over because the driver is facing driving into the sun, facing the sun directly, because mm. and then the driver just didn't see the pedestrian at all. Mm. Um so the only thing you can do one, of course, wear sunglasses. If you know that you're going to drive into the sun every day around that time, but wear sunglasses. Help. Sunglasses doesn't help. Yeah, it doesn't help that much. Yeah. But like you can, you kind of reduces the glare a little bit. And then also focus on the pavement instead yeah. of looking to the horizon mm -hmm. like you would usually do. Oh. But like really focus on the pavement because just by the pavement, you can see a lot of things like you can see if the lane is narrowing down if there's any stop line right you still want to look left and right from curb to curb mm -hmm. right from side to sidewalk to sidewalk mm -hmm. but it's 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 hard for you to actually look far and mm -hmm. if you're using the sun visor or using your hand to block your like block the yeah. sun mm -hmm. make sure you can still see the traffic light and the intersections yeah of course yeah so mm -hmm. like again focus on the pavement a little bit closer, but still scan from sidewalk to sidewalk. And then you will be able to see if the curb is going in like that. So you know there is an intersection, <clears throat> right? But that's the, that's, <clears throat> that's the best you can do, really. Oh. Like if you really have that situation, like I have that a couple of times too. Like it's just like, yeah, very little you can do <laughs> other than wearing sunglasses and slow down. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think regular sunglasses is not helpful in those situations, but you can buy those special polarized. Yes, sunglasses. I was just gonna say sunglasses. I actually bought bought a pair, and I find that, like in really bad situation, like I can actually see like mm. where I'm know. going, kind of yeah. situation. Yeah, that's polarized sunglasses are the best. Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah, polarized. You want the polarized yeah. sunglasses? Yeah. yeah. Oh. You can get it. I got it at, uh, in Hong Kong, but you can get it. Yeah, so you, you can buy it here as well. They, they are rather oh. big and they go ab above your sunglasses. Yeah. Why can't I do it? Yeah, like if you're wearing already wearing prescription glasses. Yeah. Um, then you like what the um, what May was talking about, those ones that are going over your glasses. Hmm. Or like just buy polarized sunglasses, like regular. Yeah. But make sure like you check the label and see it's polarized. Why can't I drop the little person for street view now? Hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I want to ask you about the light. Uh, my car, I just check it out. It's both off. You know, when you turn the light to the uh, green light, 40. 44 or something, it always set in off. So when I uh, drive it at night, mm. I cannot, I don't have the ta uh, tail light. So if I turn it, all the lights inside, it was dark. So what do I have to do? Yeah, so there is a little switch that controls how bright your dashboard is. Oh, okay. Yeah, you sh you need to find it. There is a little oh. switch that can do that can control how bright your dashboard is. Oh, uh, so I I have to look for it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. you know, like because outside is bright, like when it's yeah. daylight, it's yeah. really bright, right? But when it's yeah. dark, 
then yeah. it kind of dims down so it doesn't blind yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there is a switch for it. Mm. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. And it's usually mm. beside, like, you know, the, the vent on the left side is usually somewhere over there. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Our Chinese group is here. Do you want to take a short break? And sure. then we'll start the Chinese session. Okay. And then, yeah, if you guys have more questions, we can always ask more. Yeah, just, yeah you can just stay back and ask, but we need to switch over to Chinese now. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> well, we actually got through the whole thing. I'm happy. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. Okay, go to the high tea. Let's say, Miss. Yeah, I'll just quick go, go grab some uh, yeah, go grab water. Drink. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <笑>真的很難忘記學的<笑><笑> 
雞聲厭氣，咁啊教我哋要冇脾氣，哇！我哋真係感恩啊！我哋<笑>四個人一個班人嘅啫，唔知幾耐性㗎，我哋係啊。<笑>最紧要学到喎，嗬！最紧要学。系咁啊，执多执少都执到啲嘅。嗯嗯嗯。唔、嗯嗯、<笑>记得唔紧要噶，最紧要最紧要翻翻嚟学。吓、嗯，多几次啦，唔记得咪学多几次啦。系啊，学多几次识做啦。系啊。嗰啲后生仔女真系好耐性，真系耐性。陈秋兰啊，你打咗第三针未啊？未，你打咗未啊？未啦，你未啊？你咁后生，谂住迟啲打，唔系，我有资格打，唔该，我头嗰两支都唔同噶。哦，我头嗰两支都唔同药噶，所以第三支我有资格打噶啦。不过我仲未打啫。嗯，我都未打，我都未打。佢、uh、话 -huh. 你上次讲话两支针红啊一样咧，就唔需要打系嘛？要要打， yeah. 不过唔使咁快打，你要。过咗六个月咁先打咯。哦哦，咁我五日我就十一日，五日六日六日差唔多十十二日嗰头就打咯。啊，点解吓？净系嗰啲唔知过咗几多岁嘅先正可以打第三针，除非你系第一、第二针都唔同药嘅，咁你家下可以打啦。嗯嗯。阿美姐，我睇新闻咧，叫老人院嗰啲优先咯，而家要打。老人院嗰啲可以打系嘛？啊，老人院嗰啲打紧呢？好、oh, ，OK。啊，我哋阿省啊，要人嚟支持啊，或咩医生护士嚟帮我哋阿省啊，真系惨啦！咁<笑>、嗯、我哋政府做得做得比较衰啲。系<笑>啊，我政我哋嗰个政府做得唔好啊，嗰、那个性格急得滞啊，太过急。系啊，我哋做得系啦，我哋嘅政府做得唔好。嗯。啊，非常之差添啊！太过急啊，嗰、那个性情啊，你你想 open 做 business 事唔得咁急噶嘛？害死人啊！哎，害咁多人，死咁多人啊！啊，病嘅病，有啲啊起咗嗰啲唉危险嘅咩啊？哎呀！不过今次我都系听听到多啲多啲人病啊，今次不过好微嘅，嗯，好微嘅。希望佢哋冇事啦，冇大事啦，輕輕辛苦幾日咁 OK 啦。係咯係咯係咯。嗯。嗰啲醫生護士嚟咗咯，我琴晚睇新聞睇到咯。我嚟咗啦，啲醫生護士。啊，嚟咗我哋亞巴大省咯。嗯。好似啲軍醫學院、軍醫學院嗰啲醫生都嚟幫忙咯。都都幾高級㗎，嗰班醫生、護士啊，我極睇到。嗯。即係好高水平嘅，嗯，所以我哋年紀大要保重身體就係咁解，唔好唔好去咁多地方嗰啲，千祈唔好病啊！真係唔好病啊！咪係咯，病就麻煩咯，嗯。威文阿姨咧？老师嚟咗啦，嗯，嗯 ，OK， 嗯，老师你好。